The future is now. We've got the entire World Wide Web in our pockets. Chefs have created veggie burgers that bleed like real meat. And scientists can control minds. Wait, what? Yeah, that's not a joke. Hey there, I'm Ali Astrocyte, and on this episode of Neurotransmissions, we're gonna talk about optogenetics, controlling the brain using light. Yes. When I say mind control, it might sound like something out of Star Wars. But in the last decade, advances in technology have let scientists figure out how to directly control the signaling between neurons. See, neurons use electricity to send signals. All along both sides of the cell membrane are electrically charged ions, which create an electrical gradient. To send a signal, called an action potential, Ion channels have to open to allow ions to flow across the plasma membrane, shifting the balance of the electrical charge. This change in the charge sends the action potential shooting down the axon of the neuron, passing the signal along the length of the cell. Since that action potential is the key to how neurons communicate, neuroscientists have been trying to figure out how to control it. Control action potential and you control the brain. Kinda. But it wasn't until the early 2000s that they found the right tools for the job. In 2003, some scientists discovered a protein called channel rhodopsin, a light-sensitive ion channel produced by an algae. This channel opens in response to light, allowing the algae to sense the direction of a light source, like the sun. Scientists immediately realized that this new protein could be the answer to their conundrum. In 2004, Two separate groups of neuroscientists were able to use viruses to insert the channel rhodopsin gene into neurons. Since channel rhodopsin can be activated by shining a light on it, when it's expressed in neurons, shining a light on those neurons opens up the channels, generating an action potential. Scientists have been able to create mice that naturally express the protein in their neurons. And researchers can surgically insert tiny LED lights or optic fibers into different brain regions to focus their light beam on specific structures or cell types. When they turn on the light, they essentially turn on the neurons exposed to the light. This lets scientists examine how turning those cells on and off affect a lot of different things, including controlling the behavior of an awake animal. And because light is so easy to turn on and off, Optogenetics allows very precise control of neuronal activation, like in the realm of milliseconds. Because optogenetics only requires a single gene to create the protein, scientists can target specific types of neurons to make them express channel rhodopsin, letting them pick apart the roles of different cells in the brain. Even more recently, researchers have started using new light-sensitive proteins to influence neuronal signaling. Some of them open and close at different rates, affecting the speed of the neuron's signal. And some of them can actually suppress action potentials, letting scientists effectively turn off particular neurons within a circuit. Using optogenetics, neuroscientists have been able to discover some pretty fascinating new stuff. Some researchers have identified a circuit in the amygdala, sometimes thought of as being the fear center of the brain, that's involved in how we learn to fear something. And they've also been able to tease apart some of the circuits that are affected in movement disorders like Parkinson's disease. Other researchers, including some of my friends here at UCSD, are using optogenetics to understand things like how the brain processes time and how different brain cells are connected to aggressive behaviors. Some scientists are even trying to use optogenetics to help human patients by developing new kinds of pacemakers that use light to regulate the heartbeat. That's the beauty of a technology like optogenetics. It can be used for so many different things. The possibilities are really endless. I guess we'd better be careful and make sure we keep this technology away from the mad scientists, huh? Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up and hit subscribe to learn more about the new kinds of technologies scientists are using to study the brain. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte, over and out.